leather collection may not exactly be a word-of-mouth product, but to a discriminating segment, the products from this company are top of mind for corporate giveaways and lifestyle products. Behind this highly successful Filipino company is a husband and wife tandem who literally started the business from scratch. As one half of this tandem, Mrs. Yoling Sevilla related to us one afternoon. Well, the leather collection is a grandchild of the first company that my husband set up when we were married 34 years ago. Uh, you know how it is when you get married, you need money to be able to feed a growing family. So the first business uh, he, he started was a quick print shop uh, that got a little boring after a while. So we shifted or we grew the business into a design house. My husband happens to be both a graphics and a industrial designer. One of the products which he designed was an organizer. So the paper, the, the paper forms really were what he designed. And so that required a binder that was made of leather. We had the leather binders made and were not very happy with the results. So when a Ge German leather craftsman came offering to be our supplier, we said we weren't looking for a supplier. We said we wanted to get into the business ourselves. And so what happened is we started a very small work unit within the design house of five people. Now I'm a marketer. And so I would brand every product we would produce, even if the run was very small. Mm -hmm. And so since we were into paper products and these were, were leather products, we decided to call it the Leather Collection. So that's how the Leather Collection was born 30, 24 years ago. It also helped that both husband and wife had their own areas of expertise crucial to the business. He was into design while Yoling was into marketing. Mrs. Sevilla cleverly positioned the company into a corporate gift show and saw the demand. And while the leather collection prospered, the mother and grandmother companies died a natural death. To be sure, there were so many challenges they met along the way. Being basically paper people and not knowing much about leather, they had to learn the ropes. Fortunately, Mr. Sevilla is also a chemical engineer, so he made frequent trips to the different tanneries in the country to learn about the intricate processes that go into leather preparation. At that time, the corporate gifts market was considered virgin territory, with only one brand luring it over here in the Philippines, and that was Art Louie. The Sevilla couple thought that leather organizers were the perfect gifts for company CEOs and other VIPs than the diaries that were being marketed then, and this they pursued. The other challenge, of course, was financing. The leather collection started as a family enterprise with only five workers, and they did not have the financial backing of any financier. Considering that raw leather itself is expensive and the process involved is long and arduous, complicated and expensive as well, this must have been quite a challenge that the Sevilla couple had to hurdle. Uh, this was a case of just, uh, um, how shall I call it, uh, leveraging opportunities, uh, leveraging our talents, our networks and the opportunities that were presented to us. It was not a case of having a lot of money or having a financier and sitting and looking to see uh, what business can I get into. It wasn't like that. As you can see, the evolution of the business was very organic. And how organic can you get beginning from needing to provide for a family, you know? So it, it, it has evolved organically. I'd like to think that this is something that was planned for us, you know? And uh, we just continue to follow that plan. Thus far, we have learned from Mrs. Sevilla that the main challenges they faced in their struggling years were learning, organizing, and financing. The fourth challenge they had to hurdle is building a community. Because it is only by building community that we would be able to find meaning and fulfillment in our work. Um, work for us is not about making money. 
although we need to make money to live. <laughs> Work for us is not about just producing products or just increasing productivity or just improving quality. All of these are just vehicles for us to learn to become a work community where each member of the community develops all his or her talents and skills. So it's all about integral human development. Mrs. Yoling Sevilla sees the business as a microcosm of life as they continue to develop people and continue to respond to the various challenges they met along the way. But hard work and a fair sense of dealing with one's craftsmen have a way of working towards a better opportunity for a company. Because after we launched the product, we had a very large order. In 1991, you're talking about an order worth 15 million pesos. Uh, we did not have even 1 million pesos at that time. And so we had to uh, rely on our customer uh, for a down payment for us to be able to buy materials. We also had to rely on supplier credit. Huh? We also had to, and by supplier, we're not only talking about the suppliers of the materials. Remember, we had to grow from a five-man to a larger organization. So we needed machines. We needed sewing machines. We needed clipping machines. We needed a larger space <laughs> so uh, this is when the brand the leather collection was spun off and became the leather collection incorporation an order like that even by today's standards is hefty indeed but for the Sevilla couple it must have been overwhelming at first so they took stock of what they had and started working on it they had the product they had the skills and now they have a big order. Over the last 24 years, both our strategic partner, uh, Valenzuela Tanneri, I'd like to give credit to them as well. Uh, our strategic partner, Valenzuela Tanneri, and we have grown, not just in, um, we have grown in, um, in skill, in competence, in expertise, as far as the leather business is concerned. They in leather tanning, we in leather goods manufacturing. We're a developing country. And because of that, uh, there have been many grants available to us. Uh, leather goods manufacturing is a European craft. Both Valenzuela Tannery and we have received grants from the British Leather Council, from Germany, from Italy, for the processing or tanning of leather, as well as leather goods manufacturing. So all that you see is the fruit of many years of learning, of many years also of receiving training from the masters. All we had to do was be good students and keep practicing. Call it a lot of hard work and call it the right timing with a lot of serendipity thrown in. From a simple leather organizer, they made attaché cases for the discriminating executive and other business accessories. Then they branched out to lifestyle products making their company truly evolutionary. Their partnership with a reliable tanner is also crucial here. For example, uh, you would like to have uh, a leather that is, um, let's say, imprinted. Like, uh, take a look at the product behind me. One of them is imprinted with an alligator design, okay? So you tell them that, you want it imprinted. You say you want it in these colors, yeah? You say you want it matte or glossy or you want it um, with a pull-up effect, or you want it supple, or you want it firm. So you give the specifications for the leather, because the leather for a briefcase, required for a briefcase, is very different from a leather required for a wallet, for example. Yeah, and depends what kind of briefcase. You can have a messenger bag that sits, that slouches, and you can have a briefcase that's very, what do I call it, very structured, you No. Know? So, Again, it really, it really depends on what you use it for. Of course, we study trends. Uh, you get uh, two years in advance, trends in terms of finishes, in terms of colors. Leather products last virtually a lifetime, which is why they are valued and they are expensive to begin with. 
When they start planning for a collection, the brainstorming is pretty mean. How competitive is leather collection price-wise? We've exhibited in the global market at the Paper World in Frankfurt, in the Messe in Frankfurt. And we've also been the recipient of a grant from the CBI of uh, the Netherlands. Part of that uh, grant was really for us to research the market in terms of our designs, in terms of our products, in terms of our prices. And when we compared, again, apples to apples, we found, to our delight, that our products are actually on the low high end of global products. Oh no, we're no way are we uh, at the high high end, right? but low high or high mid range. And our prices were very competitive. How competitive are our prices in the local market, you'll be surprised. Today, the leather collection has 35 employees, or kabalikat, as the Sevilla couple prefers to call them. They say the challenges continue to this day. Demands change, tastes change. Yeah. Uh, as far as the corporate gifts market is concerned, it depends on how we, we rise and fall like the Philippine economy, particularly now that we're focused on the Philippine market. Yeah. So when business confidence is high, like it's been over the last five years, then business is very good. Yeah? When business uh, confidence is low, or when there are, for example, 2010, 2011, 2012, did I get the years right? You would have um, the global recession. No, 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 earlier than that, 08 to 09 to 10. Okay, you have the global recession. And then you had Ondoy. Ondoy happened the end of October, yeah? Yeah, end of October, tama? Yes. Or, yes. That only meant that for the first time, or the only time in 24 years, we had zero purchase orders for the whole month of November. I'm sorry, sorry. It happened end of September. We had zero orders. No, we were not affected. We were high and dry here, but our, to begin with, our tanner got flooded up to the second floor. But that was not the main reason. The main reason is nobody was thinking of buying. What were we doing after on the we were helping, yeah? To begin with, many of our customers were also affected, right? So, for the whole, now our peak season is Christmas. We start picking up purchase orders, well, around May, but the, the peak of picking up purchase orders for the Christmas season would be sometime October, November. And then, I, I'm sorry, September, October, November, you're delivering. We had no purchase orders. The people remembered that Christmas was coming in November, now. How much capacity do you have to produce everything that ought to have been produced diba? in prior months? Plus, our tanner could not supply all that leather also. So, we're affected by many things. No? So, just surviving in business is, is it's in itself a continuing challenge. You know? I, I suppose that would be the main challenge. How to remain relevant. Yeah? How to remain top of mind how to continue to help your customers leave a lasting impression with their customers by using gifts that come from you. So it's a very, um, how shall I call it, it's a very specific and particular business model. She also attributes their success to a wonderful work and personal relationship they have forged with their employees or kabalikats. Together, they have managed to improve and innovate, to work splendidly as an indefatigable team. And her valuable advice to budding entrepreneurs? Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Uh, what do I mean? Um, heart is where you find the inclination and the passion to do something. Like if we had no inclination for or passion for natural materials like wood, paper, and leather, then we wouldn't be in this business. Yeah. So that, that's the hard part. The other hard part is brave heart. Brave heart is uh, persisting, persevering against all odds. Never say die. The other hard part is relationships. Relationships in particular with stakeholders. And I'm not talking customers in particular, all the customers are very important stakeholders, I'm talking about other stakeholders like your suppliers, like your 
uh, kabalikan. I don't like calling them employees because I'm also employed by the company. <laughs> so we're all employees. And so your relationships in particular within the organization because only when you have um, integral and integrity in your relationships within the organization can you bring this out to your relationships with customers, to your relationships with creditors, to your relationships with suppliers, to your relationship with government and to the community at large. So it's really all about heart, <laughs> what you value.